All right, welcome back to another episode of Extreme Lifestyle Living Podcast. And man, I just gotta say, I'm having so much fun doing these. I got my routine set up. I got my my my. I think one one of the episodes I joked and said it was my little ritual, which which is not how I wanted to explain it. But you know, I just had a conversation with Emma about it as well, and just talking about how like on Sundays we really prided ourselves to. You know, try to relax and take time and enjoy yourself, nurture your soul, get ready for the week and all those things. But I just naturally gravitate towards working on Sundays. And I can't explain what it is or why or anything, but I just gravitate to my desk and I do a lot of like self-expressive avenues of work, you know, like my podcast, uh, business, you'd call it marketing. But, you know, to me, it's called acknowledging, expressing myself online, you know, so like I, I, to me, it's not marketing. That's even one of my clients. I don't call them clients. I call them my homies, home mats, my soldiers, my community, because it's. Uh, but there's two. There's all kinds of different uh, hats we wear at those. But you know, I just really gravitate towards Sundays and just really just doing my thing, and I just fucking love it. And today's topic, actually, I was thinking about it all week. I was like, what do I want to talk about for next week? Because I always have a handful of topics and you know, touching points and key points, and like try to like make it as personal and uh, from my own experiences with some impactful, knowledgeable takeaways as well. Things you could use, things you could like resonate with, perspective changes, all those things, right? But this episode, I just felt like doing something like a little bit different. Like I want to obviously give you a lot of impact, a lot of value, a lot of insight, a lot of perspective, experience on life, and everything like that. But you know, with summer coming up uh, over the next little bit, uh, within the, you know, it's uh, June's next month. Once you see, once it's June, you start to panic a little bit. You're like, oh no, you know, the summer's really here. Then it's July, Canada Day, then it's August. And then before you know it, summer's gone. And the reason why I feel like this is such a relevant topic to have a conversation about is because everybody wants to look their best for the summer. Everybody wants to make sure they feel and look their best for the summer. And it's not about their best with an asterisk, meaning that they have to come in absolutely shred it you know what i mean nothing nothing like this i'm not saying from a physical standpoint solely but that's a big area of the topic we're going to have today but i'm just saying in general like a lot of people don't really enjoy their summers and i'm saying this now because you know tomorrow is a long weekend and like i said next thing next thing you know it's june and then it's canada day and then it's august and next thing you know you're like oh next summer and then it becomes january you're doing that bullshit january resolution but Anyways, the biggest thing I want to talk about today was I wanted to just share my experience with dealing with the emotions of not liking what you see in the mirror. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, like I said, summer's coming around the corner and everyone's like, you know, getting hyper fixated a little bit on like their physicality. And if you say you're not, I would honestly ask, have to tell you to have a conversation with yourself and just ask how of how much of that degree is you actually just lying? Because at the end of the day, like a lot of you guys know me as who I am today and that's, that's great. I want you guys to know me as who I am today. I put a lot of pride and effort and uh, time into making me feel my best and, and to display my best self to the world every day, you know, because I believe everyone should do that for themselves because that's when you feel your best. You know, you're doing the things that are, resonate with you. You're, 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 you're flowing through your own, your own time and your own space and you're just enjoying it. And that's how I like to believe I'm living my life. And once I got into this zone, this is why I think it's so important for me to talk about things like this is because a lot of you guys don't know this version of me. Right, like so. There's so many different ways I want to begin this conversation, and that's why I said I want to do this episode a little bit differently in terms of me having a conversation through my experiences and then breaking it down from there. So the topic of the conversation is dealing with the emotions of not liking what you see in the mirror. Now, the I don't I want to highlight the key point of what I'm trying to get across here, and that is every single time that you look in the mirror, whether it's you're washing your hands after using the washroom, you're walking in a, in, in a place that has mirrors, you know, you're, you're shopping, any place, you know what I mean? There's even, like, like, sometimes there's even mirrors at, like, grocery stores and stuff now, you know? So it's like, whenever you see yourself in the mirror, period, so multiple times a day, you wake up, you brush your teeth before you go to work, you brush your teeth before you go to bed, that's twice minimum, you use the washroom a few times throughout the course of the day, you're seeing yourself in the mirror when you're wash, uh, washing your hands, like, there's all these times, you go to the gym, you're checking yourself out, I'm talking about every single instance that you stare yourself in the mirror. I'm not talking about, you know, like, yeah, this is a light conversation. You know, we're going to talk about when you look in the mirror. No, I'm talking literally, literally every fucking time you see yourself in the mirror. Because like I said, even when I mentioned earlier, you can lie to yourself if you want. But deep down, you have that gut check every time, every time, every single fucking time. Some people and I'm like, you know, I work with a lot of clients. I love this part of my job. And some people don't even look at themselves in the mirror. And... The thing that blows my mind about that, and because it's not not that blows my mind about it, but the thing that like I want to bring attention to about that is, there's people right now in your life that you that are dealing with this that you have no fucking clue, 
It could be your husband. It could be your wife. It could be your best friend. It could be your mom. It could be your dad. These are things that we keep internal that we don't even talk about because it's been so embedded into our soul that we just assume that this is the way it is. And it's almost like that same uh, that same sense of reality where like you see successful people and you're already shitting on them. Being like, ah, oh, that's nice. That car's a rental. Or, you know, I wish I could be this. Or I wish I had that foundation. Or I wish someone will help me do there. And it's the same sense, right? Like you're just so conditioned and so used to these low frequency emotions and, and states in your life that you keep them. So the way this podcast is going to work is I'm going to give you my experiences of my entire life of me hating every avenue of when I see myself in the mirror. I have a long list of examples, and I'm going to be very vulnerable and share them from my heart because they are 110% true from my perspective and in my life. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break them down into two different pain levels. Deep pain number one, and then deep pain number two. And I'm going to break down the psychology of those two different deep pains because it's all about perspective about how you look in the mirror and love yourself. And then once you can break that down and take control of the, of the controllables, embrace the things you don't like, move forward, I promise you, you guys can look in the mirror and be the utmost fucking happiest. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, like I said, you guys only know me for who I am today. You guys do not know me as the chubby kid playing Call of Duty, never leaving the house, petrified, not masculine at all. Fitness wasn't even in my category, scared to talk to females, the whole nine yards. Everyone just knows me as who I am today. And as I said, I'm grateful for that. I worked very hard to get here. But the grass is never always greener on the other side. And what I mean by that is a lot of people on the outside looking in, oh, he's low body fat. He's doing this. He's doing that. He does this. He he doesn't know what this feels like. So that's why I'm going to start from my personal experiences to let you guys know, one, I know exactly what the fuck this feels like. A lot more than I maybe even would like. But that gives me the experiences and the positioning to talk about it on this level, which gives me such amount of passion, which, like I said, which is why I gravitate to work on Sundays. I just love sitting here and just talking about this stuff, right? So for me personally, I can remember being as young as 10 years old and going to the Boys and Girls Club, going for walks, doing all those things. And if, ever, if anyone, whoever was familiar with the Boys and Girls Club, you know we had a lot of fun. You know, you met at the club, and then you had your day set out. You either took the bus, you took, uh, like, the actual Metro Transit bus, or you took, like, a school bus, or you walked. And I remember those days that we would walk. We'd always talk about how many kilometers you were getting into. But the people that aren't familiar with the Boys and Girls Club, it's just like a little rec- at a community rec center that we used to go to as uh, children, or not, not Not everybody got the chance to go to it, but it was kind of like summer programs, you know, kind of kept you engaged with the summer as a child, and you had a lot of community camaraderie, that community com- uh, computer room, stuff like that, so kind of like any community center, really, but um, I remember, this is as young as I can remember starting for me not, like, already shying away from the mayor, because around 10 years old, you're about that age where you start to realize, you know, some kids are getting really tall, some kids are getting chubby, you're starting to realize the significance of bullying, or you're starting to realize the significance of social structure and social status, you know, like, a prime example, me 10 years old, never played liquor sports my entire life, I uh, wasn't very tall, I didn't hit puberty until later than most people, so it's like, for me at 10 years old, seeing other 10 year olds that were like, you know, hanging out with 13 year olds, it was like, you started to kind of notice that social structure, so, I remember going for walks and we would walk like, you know, an hour to this excursion, hang there all day and then an hour back then we go home. But I remember there was one instance, I mean, I, and this is as vivid as I'm, I'm going to be honest, like I remember where we started getting, like people started talking about physicalities, you know what I mean? There's guys with abs, there's like little kids with veins, like not little kids, but like 13 year old, you know what I mean? You start to hit puberty, everyone's starting to like develop and look different. And I remember with me, like I just was like a chubby little kid. And I remember like I'd go on these walks in, um, with the boys and girls club and I'd come home and I would, I would even compare myself pre-walk and post-walk in the mirror at such a young age as 10 years old. Be like, why don't I look like these people? Why don't I look like that guy? Why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? And then like questioning so many things. And I can remember that from such a young age as 10 years old. And that's why I'm starting off with this experience and me being so vulnerable is because like now that I'm 28 years old, that was 18 years ago. You know what I mean? That was 18 years ago that I can remember having my first, my first time like this, you know what I mean? So it's like, I under, that's why I want to break down the psychology of the pains and how it all, and how it all plays out is because I know what it's like to be on this side of the table, looking in the mirror and having that gut wrench check, be like, damn, just so disappointed not liking yourself and hating everything about it. And then having that bleed through the course of the day. And that's why I was being so serious about saying, highlighting that, no, I'm not having a light conversation, but you know, let's enjoy ourselves in the mirror. Like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like the, to all them times, all those times you go to the mirror. Every single time you got that gut-wrenching check, you're just like, mm, that's not what I want. So I can remember that starting for me at the earliest 10 years old. And then, uh, you know, like in elementary, some other kids are bigger and they're stronger. And it's like, it's not, like I said, it's not so much as like the physical 
av- or not the the sense of actual strength, but it's like the visibly the physicality. You start to see the the differences, and you know, like females too. Like you guys have all those things. Like you, like the girls, if uh, girls start developing before you uh, other girls. Like there's all everyone. We all deal with it. And this is just my experience, right? But junior high was when I really started to fall into my shell. I really started to f- feel inferior. Now. There's a whole other backstory of what I could talk about, you know, with me dealing with foster care and, and all these other things to 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 blame why I always felt inferior and never felt like I was enough. But uh, the, like that's I'll talk about that in a second because I don't I don't directly believe that's a huge ave- avenue of it, which is why I want to highlight the physicality of it because that's more of a mental inferiority I'm talking about. But I'm talking about like I can remember like comparing my physicality in the mirror at such a young age. And I remember junior high is when I really started to fall into my shell because like I hit puberty late as a male. Like I remember I didn't hit puberty really significantly until like 16, 17, right? Like fully developing at 18. Like some of my friends, like they were, they were fully developed at 14. So it was like, that's why I brought up the foster care stuff because it was more so a victim mentality setting. You know what I mean? I was like, well, I don't have my, I don't have no father around because they give you a backstory. I grew, I grew up with my grandparents, my grandfather, and my grandmother. And my grandfather, you know, he was typical back in the, he was a typical guy. He was, I think he's 70 something now, but like, you know, he just went to work, came home, drank, went to sleep. So the victim mentality definitely like stirred up from like junior high into high school, then into 19, like, you know what I mean? It just kind of like, it was always just kind of got worse, kind of got worse. And like, again, I started going to the gym heavily in grade nine and 10. So I did start to see a lot of, a lot of gains and a lot of like, uh, like gains in this mental area, like being physically bigger than most people, you know what I mean? And I felt that. But then in 2011, in the car accident, which took the gym away from me again, which started the mental games. But all these, all these different things, I can just remember saying at, at, at as early as 10 years old, like starting that that mental game of not enjoying what I see in the mirror. Then I can remember like really highlighting it from grade five, six, and seven. You know, right when you transition from elementary to junior high. Junior high is a hell hell show for a lot of people, and I feel like there's a lot of people that have like trauma from these places because like. I don't know, like, I just feel like you're at such a vulnerable age, and, like, so many people go through so many different things, like, even when, like, you know, I grew up with very little, but I knew with a lot of people that, like, you know, had, like, loving homes, and all of a sudden, junior high, they're getting divorced, and that starts all these things, and then you go right into high school, it's like, now figure your fucking life out, right, so I would say, on top of just, just to sum it up before I get into the main points of why I want to talk about this, but uh, of, of me leading up into high school, it was just always, like, you know, I was smaller than everyone, never hit puberty. It was just always, always just judging and just like never felt confident in the mirror ever. And then when I started to feel confident in the mirror by going to the gym and hitting all these new avenues of physical, I was in a car accident, which took that away from me. So there's a lot of victim mentality. I feel like that's set in for me personally. You know what I mean? That from, and again, I'm not going to blame myself for it. I went through a lot, but I feel like from 16 to about 19, there was a lot of victim mentality, you know, 19 to 21, I would say, because then after that, I, I wouldn't say I settled for life, but I was really struggling. You know, like I, I didn't enjoy any app because again, after from 10 years old until 16, 18 years old, never enjoying what I seen in the mirror started to really, really become daunting on my mental health. You know, that's why I said I started to become a victim mentality. I started blaming like, you know, I don't have no father, no father figure to come fucking show me how to be a man. I don't have, you know, even I hit puberty like that's even more of a sign that I'm not even a man. You know, I never played sports. And like, even though I got hit by this fucking car, I can't even go in and play sports if I fucking wanted to. Like all these different things, right? So from 19 till I was 21, I honestly was just depressed in the basement of a shitty house I lived in staying with one of my exes. And, um, uh, it was just there. I say 19 till 21. I would just say I went through the fucking motions. I literally didn't do much. I went to the gym. Don't get me wrong. But it was just like just going to the gym. It was routine. It made me feel good in the present moment. I still seen a lot of results, but it was like a grind to see any success physically. Like I didn't see much. I ended up getting chubbier and going even more depressed for a little bit because of uh, which I'll talk about in a second. But from 19, you start drinking. I gained a lot of weight. I didn't know there was a lot of uh, calories in uh beer takeout blacking out not really remembering what you ate so then between 19 and 21 when then you see like most people i mean you know, 28 now you realize that they're they peaked at a young age but you really just start to see all these quote-unquote men you see these guys at the same age as you and you're just telling yourself that you're shit compared to them like you know you got like some people are football stars some of these guys are in the best shape of their fucking lives you know and in a joke you could say testosterone is peaked they're they're thriving and i felt like i haven't seen anything you know i felt like i was just like honestly for lack of terminology a baby bag bitch is how i called it you know it just felt like a small man small person i hated every time i seen in the mirror i at this point too like 
for to, to, to talk about the severity of how bad my mentality became because of this this not looking at myself in the mirror I hated it and, and it bled into this was I used to convince convince myself that like no one knew who I was like one of my best friends would be like dude come to this party like everyone knows who you are and hang out and I would get in this house and I would just be like frozen like I would just be frozen wouldn't be able to speak wouldn't be anything and it would just like I I, don't, I can't even explain it like I was just so fucking down and depressed and in low frequency and that laid it up right up until I was 21 years old and I remember 21 I hit my lowest breaking point I hated who I saw in the mirror it wasn't didn't just become of like oh I wish I like you know I wish my I wish I could see abs or I wish I didn't have like these love handles or I wish I like you know I wish I seen striations I wish I seen veins I wish I looked like it worked out I wish I looked like a man I wish I looked like something more and I remember I was like suicidal and like that was it like I was I never got to the point thankfully and it gives me a cold saying it because like I said the vulnerable episode never got to the point where I was like actually going to think about how I was going to do it but I just knew that if I didn't make a change like it wasn't going to look too bright like I literally was just so down and out in my brain so this is when everything started to change and I'm not going to talk about it too much because I don't want to make the podcast about that but that's when I decided to get my first coach going and, and go on this journey of 60 days of just coaching and listening to some some professional pay like two thousand twenty five hundred dollars to get 60 days of someone to tell me what to do every single fucking day around the clock and that's when I changed my entire life. That's when I, I lost 35 pounds. That's when I lost all of these, all like I lost it all. I lost all my body fat percentage. I got real lean. I ended up getting a man bun during the time. So like my life drastically changed within 60 days on a physicality standpoint. And and that's when, that's why I want to talk about so much and highlight the, highlight the main point of like what you see, what not liking what you see in the mirrors, because I wanted to be vulnerable and just bring the storyline up to where I became into the best shape of my life or into one of the best shapes of my life because I wanted to highlight the mentality that it left me with when I got into the best shape of my life because we're going on got in the best shape, best shape of my life around 21 I started to really start judging myself around 10 years old by not liking what I saw in the mirror so we're going on 10 to 11 years of being like beating myself up and then within less than two months the same people that I was petrified to talk to, the same females I was petrified to talk to, the same guys in the gym that were working out that like I would be like, man, like I would give anything to work out with these guys. Like these guys are all these these guys, these girls, they're they're engaging with me. Some people even like some people to this day don't even know who I was back then because of how drastically it changed and how fast. So the reason why I want to bring that story up, and it may be a little bit long winded, but I want to talk about like the deep level one pains with those with that journey. And I want to talk about the deep level pain. Uh, deep level two pains with this journey and the reason why I wanted to frame the podcast like that is because I want you to understand that once I got the physicality I got shredded even who I am today like low body fat percentage in great shape all the time it doesn't take away the pains that happened mentally from beating myself up and that's the biggest thing with being a coach and in the fitness industry is a lot of people just want to come in they want to lose weight fast get the best shape of life and they're good and that's just not what happens that's just not what happens it's longevity you can't come in and lose 20 pounds and then, and then your your ship is sailed and you're good for the rest of your life. Some people, yes, it works that way. But there is always like 99.9% .9 of the time, there's always something else that's going to come up because we're humans. We're not perfect. And I always like to give the example, like you decide to go, what, three to six months hard in the gym and on your on your life. And then what you think you deserve to, that, that deserves to outweigh, what, 10 years of you eating shitty, 10 years of you doing things not the right way. So the reason why I want to highlight the level one, level two pains is because that can break down, give you a hell of a lot more understanding of how you could actually make good successful headway with these type of issues because i'm telling you shying away from what you see in the mirror is not a comfortable thing and those gut-wrenching checks you get every time you see yourself that you're really just disappointed in how you feel about yourself you're disappointed at where you're at in your life you're disappointed with how you feel it's not worth it but the thing that is worth it is getting on the other side which is why i'm sharing all this with you sharing all of my experiences with you sharing all my vulnerabilities and and if any of these resonate with you at all even by like 0.001 percent i challenge you to even reach out and let's have a conversation about it i'm an open book and that's why i'm very grateful to be in the position that i am because i get to talk about my experiences talk about my vulnerabilities teach you how to get over them teach you how to get on the other side teach you how to look in your look at yourself in the mirror as i do now with the utmost love, confidence, and value. And that's the thing that I want to talk about because that is the hardest thing to get to. And you can hear it in my voice. Like, it, it's hard. I know what it's like to be on the other end of the table being like, I don't know if I'm going to make it through the next two weeks of my life, two, four, two to two to eight months of my life. And now I'm looking at my life being like, damn, like I'm upset if I can't get another 100 years. 
you know, and it all starts with loving yourself. And I know that is maybe a little dark, a little heavy, but every time you see yourself in the mirror, you do not deserve to not love what you see, period. So I'm going to talk, I'm going to give you three level one deep pain. So what level one means is I'm going to call them surface level. I'm going to call them a little bit surface level. I'm going to call them uh, deep level one pains or things that we sell ourselves on in terms of what we think is really the issue. And it is, they are the issues, don't get me wrong, but they're not the end all be all issues in terms of pains. Like these are the issues that we are, our our mindsets get engulfed in, but these aren't the real, these aren't the real traumas that come from these issues. So deep level one pains are the ones that we all know about, but we ignore them. Number one is insecurity. You feel insecure about how you feel, your physical pain, you know, it involves lack of confidence. You're constantly worrying about how other people perceive you. That's a, that's a level one pain, insecurity. You feel insecure. Self-esteem issues, you know? You don't like what you see in the mirror, so it, that leads to low self-esteem issues. And it can affect all kinds of different avenues of your life, you know, your relationships, your social interactions, your overall well-being in, in everywhere you interact, whether you're at the counter at, at, at Starbucks buying a coffee or if you're at work trying to ask for a promotion. It's like you, you're not confident in, your, in everything, you know, let alone insecure. Body image issues, you know, you're not just, you're always picking yourself apart. You're like, well, if my ass looked like this and my arms look like this and my body looked like this, my waist was like this, if the scale said this, like you're just not happy, right? And the thing about these is like, these are the issues that we have on the forefront of our brains every time. And the thing that I want to relate from the deep one level of pain issues from this before getting to level two is the time we allow ourselves on these issues. If you're insecure about something, then it's like usually that comes comes through one or two avenues of you progressing with that. Insecure means like is either education, you need to be educated on a situation so you feel confident about it, or it's experience. You're not experienced in something so you can't be insecure. Or it becomes a deep level two pain issue we'll talk about in a second. Same with self-esteem issues, right? Say in a relationship or like in a certain social aspect or social interaction, like you're going to a club or a friend's birthday party, all of these things you either have have a lot of experience in I'm not really that great in social interactions we go to Emma's parents uh, house we have family dinners and it's like I'm lost I'm like bro this is a lot of social interaction on a level that I'm not used to same with certain relationships and like uh, like mutually beneficial relationships when you can have like more than 10 15 friends you know what I mean I'm not used to that so experience with that and it's like same with your self-esteem issues it's like when it comes to avenues like that we are always like in our heads thinking about like oh do our friends really love us or like I should have said should I have said that or like am I am I professional enough in the office like all these different things but it's like if you have enough experience in them and education knowing what what the example should be then you can rid some of these issues I'm not saying get rid of them all but I'm going to talk about the level two issues in a second same a body image one simple one if you don't like what you go, like what you like what you like in the mirror go to the gym you know you change that and again then it comes a different issues like oh i have been and i haven't seen success that's a different question it's a different answer but it's like you can actually change the way you look i'm, I'm proof of that which is why i'm sharing so much but if we ignore all of these and we don't take action on small things that can change our insecurities change our self-esteem issues and change our body image issues it can lead to the real reasons we struggle that which we can't ignore so deep level pain too, being insecure all the time and becoming like, you know, withdrawn is social isolation. You know, you just, you dislike your parents so much that it bleeds into like your, your self-esteem. Then you get fear of judgment or rejection from people, you know, so you start to withdraw. You're so petrified of like, you know, being judged or being this, that you start to become lonely and exclude yourself from things because that's the only little bit of control you have, you know, deep level pain too. again, impaired quality of life. Not only are you withdrawn from social isolation but now you're like hindering your participation in activities you're not going to as many social events with your friends you're not going to like you're not even really trying to tell people it's your birthday anymore you're not even really trying to like you're just becoming a shell of your own person you're not living abundantly you're living scarcity like low frequency you're not out there just going crazy and just being like yo i'm excited for my life and doing all these things and that's what i'm kind of getting into now like realizing how high of a quality of life standard i can have and that's the beauty of why i'm sharing everything i'm sharing is because it can be as good as you fucking want it to be and if we ignore the deep level one pains of these things, the surface level avenues of like these insecurities, these self-limiting beliefs and things, they can really impair our quality of life, which is the real pain. You know what I mean? You're like, you don't want to look back when you're 40 and be like, man, I should have went to school or, or look back and be like, I should have done this or like, you know, like any like limit your personal achievements, you know, like you just don't want that. And another one too is, which is like the one I want to highlight the most because the, when I got into the best shape of my life, everyone assumed everything was just great after that. You know, it's all it's perfect. You got it all now. And it's like, no, 
mental and emotional struggles. Like just because like I now enjoy what I look in the mirror, I still got to deal with depression. I still got to deal with anxiety. I still got to deal with the negative self-perception I developed over 15, 20 years of looking at myself one way. So it's like the faster that we just attack the surface level, deep level one pains, like just being insecure, self-esteem issues, things like this before they, they compound over time and become things we don't want. Then that's when it, then that's, that's why I'm sharing this song with you because it's like, now that I'm in the best shape of my life, I'm dealing with depression a lot. You know what I mean? Like, cause like within 60 days it became, it was like, an, I felt like it was an overnight success looking back on it now, but it's like, it's led to me to change my life so drastically into the area that I'm in at now. And all of this stems from like me making sure that I took awareness of, okay, every time I check myself in the mirror, I am not happy. Every time I wash my hands in the mirror, I don't really look at myself in the mirror. When I get in and out of the shower, I'm not really sitting there like admiring who I am as a person and being like, damn, all these different things. And it's like, I want to change that, you know, because when the question comes from when you change your narrative of can you handle your own feelings and emotions in the mirror to how do you imagine yourself having those emotions, not being able to control them and you have a family to take care of? You know, like, how do you how can you say you, you can't handle those emotions? But what if you have a daughter or a son? or family that come up to you and say, Hey dad, Hey mom, like, this is what I'm dealing with. How do I deal with it? And you're going to try to give them honest advice. Are you going to be integral to those conversations? You know, tell them that you're dealing with the same exact thing and you haven't figured it out. Or are you going to like lie, you know? And that, that, that was the question that I asked myself was like, if I have kids and I have all these, all these different avenues in my life and support around me, the, the life that I truly think I can build and they like, mom, dad, how do I have this issue? Or like, what if you catch your kids or someone in your, in your family crying about the same issue that you're just unsure how to embrace, but they're a little bit stronger than you to embrace the emotions. But then that's what I mean about being integral. Are you going to be honest? Say, Hey, like you're actually embracing these emotions. I don't know what this is like. I don't like myself in the mirror neither. Or are you going to lie and give some false hope like someone gave me as a kid and then next thing you know you're doing shit you don't need to be doing to get a result that doesn't make sense you know but that's that's a story for another time but I really want to just jump in here and just talk on talk about dealing with your emotions and not liking what you see in the mirror because every single one of us deal with it on some scale and if you think that some people don't just imagine you go to a, just imagine you go and buy some clothes and then all of a sudden you you don't have the right clothes and attire in there but you put on the most hideous outfit ever you're not gonna like yourself in the mirror you're gonna get some emotions from that but this one highlighted this episode. I want to highlight the physicality behind not liking yourself in the mirror because I think it's one of those things that not isn't talked about that much. I think it's something that should be talked about, especially right now with where summer's coming up. And I really want to just lead by example and be vulnerable with my experiences and things along that nature because you guys only know me as I am now. You guys only know me as who I am now. And the biggest thing with that is I want everyone to feel as great as I can every day and I want everyone to know that they can change their life at a drop of a dime. So I hope... If there's anything in this that resonated with you, I hope that you take a little bit of that information and just know that you can change your life at a drop of a dime. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want, how you want. It just comes with a relentless amount of fucking hard work and never giving up on yourself. And I really wanted to dissect like the deep level one pains versus the deep level two pains because for me, education is a big thing because if I know more about something and I know it's factual information, then that helps me alter my pers my perception on things to grow in a good positioning because again, like experiencing so much hardship as a young child and throughout my life, I need experience on top of education to have concrete decisions to feel the best about them, which is why I like to share my experiences with you guys before I give you guys some factual information or things you guys can take back for impact because I want you to know I've lived these things, I've breathed these things, and I'm coming back through experience and then giving you some information through what helped me personally. I'm never going to sit here and tell you this is what this is and this is what that is. So for me personally, going through this entire revelation of hating what I've seen in the mirror, being disgusted and having no hope, to absolutely loving it and now getting caught in the mirror being like damn okay shit like and even when i gain fat now like from eating too much junk food and things i'm like looking in the mirror i'm like damn bro we got this and i can't even explain how great that feels so for me breaking the level one pain versus level two pain and really having an idea of what those look like and then taking action on the ones that do resonate with you and that you can make sense of now i think will and i know for a fact will make the, all of the world the, of the difference in anybody's life that it resonates with even a one percent of a level and that is it. I hope you guys have a great motherfucking week. I appreciate you guys always for listening to me ramble and rant on about what I got to go on about. And I just really hope you guys really feel impacted and value from everything I share because I really do believe that no matter who you are, wherever you are, whatever your situation is, I do believe that every single thing in your life, no matter how high of a pigment of imagination you think it is, I think it could be an absolutely any part, anyone's life. 
at any time can be at the best part of their life. You just got to be willing to put in the work. You got to be willing to embrace anything that's in front of you for it. And if you can do that and get relentless and show up for yourself, like in that regard and show yourself that you can do this, that 1% turns into two, turns into four, turns into eight. And we can go down that road. But I appreciate you all. Have a blessed motherfucking week. Let's go.